is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, I am Nifemi Ogunto with the Core TV News this hour. The first executive governor of Edo State Chief John Odigo Yego has emerged as the new national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC. He clinched the position last night at the party's national convention in Abuja after former governor Bayelsa State Timmy Presiva withdrew from the race. Oyegun's other rival from the post, uh, for the post, rather, Tommy Kimi, was yet to show up at the convention at voting time, while Chief Sam Jaja, who was also touted as showing interest in the race, did not purchase the nomination form. Court even has gathered that party leaders had earlier prevailed on ex-vice president Atiku Abubakar, who was a Kimi's major backer, to ask the ex-foreign minister to step down for Oyegun. Although Kimi seemed to have the wish of the leaders, there were speculations that he might defect to the People's Democratic Party, PDP, which has been making overtures to him. INEC Resident Commissioner, Electoral Commissioner in Ekiti, Halilo Pai, and Commander of the Army Detachment drafted for the June 21 governorship election, Ali Momo, have restated the commitment to the conduct of a hitch free poll in the state. Our Ekiti State Correspondent, Rashid Rashid, now completes the start. As reactions continue to trail the discovery of a truckload of voting materials intercepted by the Nigerian Army in Nado Ekiti on Thursday, the INEC resident electoral commissioner in the state has allayed all fears, indicating that the material are waste products of the commission. Already, there are fears on the part of the people that the discovery is a deliberate plan hatched by yet unknown politicians to manipulate the forthcoming election. Again, the resident electoral commissioner maintains INEC and security agencies are ready for the election. Because uh, everybody will see that uh, uh, we have prepared it. In terms of the uh, materials, we have already sent all the non-sensitive uh, materials to the uh, 16 local government areas. We have already trained our SPOs, and as we speak, we are training the uh, POs and the, the APOs. So we are now expecting the sensitive Materials. Leader of the Army Detachment drafts to the state for the election, Ali Umomo admonished Ekiti people to be at peace and assured them that the Nigerian Army is only on ground for that purpose and not to scare them. We are not here to harass, to embarrass anybody. We are here to keep the peace, to make sure Ekiti people, life and property is secure throughout the period of the election. Those who are harboring hoodlums, and I bet you will get them out. And I've given the order to my men that whoever is caught with weapons or any offensive weapons against the state will be brought down. That's a straight message to everybody, irrespective of his party. We are neutral. He, however, did not fail to read riot acts to those planning to truncate the peaceful conduct of the election. But I want to assure you that my men are everywhere to see that the incoming election is free and unfair. We are not going to take anything for granted. Actually, we have almost 10 days to go, but we are already on the ground. And that's to send a strong warning to those troubleshooters that we are ready to match them west to west and arm to arm. But then, gentlemen, please convey to them. Though with so much trepidation on the part of many, the people believe that a heavy presence of military personnel and other security agencies on the streets of Ekiti may very well guarantee the desired peace before, during, and after the re-election. Rashid Rashid. Core TV News, Adoikiti.
Meanwhile, the police authorities have assured Nigerians, especially indigents of Ikita State, of the readiness of security operatives to ensure a hitch free governorship election in the state. Inspector General of Police Mohammed Abubakar gave this assurance during a brief meeting with the police management team. He warned all troublemakers and antisocial elements to stay away from Ikiti throughout the period of the election as the police will not hesitate to arrest and prosecute anyone, no matter how highly placed in the society. Police spokesman Frank Mba disclosed that the IG has ordered Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations Michael Zokuma to relocate to Ikita State in order to ensure adequate police presence and coordination of all security operations for the June 21 election. Eminent constitutional lawyer Itza Sage has condemned the religious toga being bandied around the choice of who steps into the shoes of Abatande Fashila as the next governor of Lagos. Sage, who made this known against the backdrop of calls in some quarters, that religion, a religion is a premium factor, says performance is and should be the yardstick for measuring success. A Muslim government does not be Muslim roads for Muslims to use alone. We all use the roads. We all use the hospitals. We all use the schools. Let us go for the best person regardless of his religion. And let this primitive and backward cry be totally ignored. Let us go for the best regardless of the religion. Minister of Police Affairs Abdul Jalili Adishion has justified the siege laid on the palace of the Emir of Kano by policemen. He says it was done to protect lives and property. He advised Governor Rabi Kwankwazo to appreciate the efforts of security agents at ensuring peace in the state instead of abusing President Goodluck Jonathan. Kwankwazo had on Wednesday accused Jonathan of being responsible for the protests that followed the appointment of a former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, as the Emir of Kano. The governor also accused the president of deploying policemen to the palace in his bid to thwart Sanusi's emergence as the traditional ruler of the ancient town. However, Adeshiyo, in a statement by his chief press secretary, Wali Akiola, says the governor needed to be educated on the role of police and all the security agencies in the society. The minister added that no responsible governor would raise his voice and abuse a sitting president with a view to scoring cheap political goals. And now Nigerian women judges have called for justice for all in a sensitization forum to educate security operatives, market women, students and parents on the right actions to take in cases of sexual abuse. Omotayo Alo was at the conference put together by the judges and brought back the support. Let them sit down with the CJ and know how to handle the market women. So that's our reaction now because we have been messed up by all these men. And the little ones we send out for market, they have been messed up. So in order to put an end to rising cases of sexual abuse and maltreatment of victims, women judges urge security operatives to investigate abuse cases professionally without prejudice before going to court. These women judges emphasize the importance of the move for justice for all in the country. We want to break the culture of silence. We want police officers to welcome victims with empathy and not say, what were you wearing? Where did you go? What were you doing at 10 p.m. at night that you said you were raped? The important thing is that she was raped by somebody who is not supposed to rape her. We need the police to be proactive. We need the courts to be sensitive. Sometimes you have to be there. In the course of testifying, you will get placed down and start crying. You can start down the matter. Our focus is on violence against women, particularly sexual violence against women and everywhere all over the world where our members are found they are doing similar things at resource persons at the conference advice on ways to prevent rape and steps that victims must take one of the things is not to keep silent no matter how shameful it might be because they are mitigating um, circumstances it affects their mental health physical health uh, there might be diseases there is the danger of pregnancy. If all of us decide to arise and decide that we are going to be advocates against this, we are going to speak up. We are not going to tolerate a culture of silence. We are not going to tolerate people making jokes about what is potentially a very explosive and dangerous situation. Then we, 
are the ones who can make the change in society. What is important is the evidence that is available. And the duty of the police is to put together that evidence. When I come to the police and I say that um, someone has stolen from me, that's all I need to do. They then go on to investigate. A representative of the Nigerian police force put up a defense to counter accusation from one of the resource persons. However, the Lagos State Deputy Governor, represented by Ed Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Riskat Akinyode, promised to put in more measures to reduce the rising trend of women and child abuse. We now need everybody's help to ensure that uh, we prosecute offenders and we sensitize our people what to do, how to escape, you know, or to avoid all these matters. The Association of Female Justice in Nigeria has brought to the awareness people of Nigeria that all women should be treated fairly, especially as it relates to rape cases and sexual violence of women. Their call to all Nigerians is justice for all, and it's the belief that this call is heeded by all Nigerians. On Motayo Alo, for TV News, Lagos. I will be back with more stories shortly after this time out. Don't go away. From time immemorial, women have bet life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, and Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a wife, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Nigerians continue to Night, the city of Lagos. Be the first to know Core TV News. from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Our federal we news. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV. Our 24 hour news station. Glad to have you back. For more information on our news and other programs, you can visit us on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash TV News. You can also follow us on our Twitter handle at TV News NG. As well as on YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash TV Liver Space and News. The International Criminal Court says it will try Ivory Coast ex-president Lauren Gbagbo for crimes against humanity allegedly committed during a bloody 2010-2011 election standoff. Gbagbo 69, the first former head of state brought before the ICC, is accused of masterminding the campaign of violence in the world's largest cocoa-producing country during post-presidential election violence. More than 3,000 people were killed. The charges include murder, rape and prosecution. One of the three judges dissented, however, saying there was not a realistic chance of a conviction. Gbagbo maintains that he was evicted in favor of his rival, current president Alassane Ouattara, thanks to a plot led by former colonial master France. French and UN forces backed an assault on Gbagbo's villa in Abidjan, after which Ouattara's forces detained him and handed him over to the ICC. The charges are for allegedly fomenting the wave of violence as refused to hand over to election winner Watara after 10 years in power. He has, however, denied the charges against him. And that wraps it on Court TV News uh, on the hour for this time. Do join us again at the top of the hour for more stories. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. <laughs>